Yeah, coming off of a uh, uh, confidence building uh, result in DC, uh, obviously a tough place to go. Uh, good for the guys uh, to get a result, to keep a clean sheet. Obviously with, uh, with a couple wins, now you start to get uh, individual accolades. That's something we've stressed. Uh, as the team has success, you'll start to see uh, you know, Gooch, Harris, uh, Andre get recognized for, for different performances uh, during the course of, uh, of the weeks. Uh, CJ as well. So uh, happy from that standpoint. Um, they've really done a good job limiting uh, the opponent's chances. The biggest thing with that is uh, trying to cut out their key guys. So whether it's Question, Acosta, uh, doing a good job. Uh, Jermaine Jones back in LA. Uh, we've done a, a good job of limiting their touches and their chances. Uh, and, and have played some decent soccer uh, along the way as well. Uh, you know, I know we were up a man at this stage, uh, but uh, the, the, the Herber's goal is actually, if you, if you count uh, 46 pass sequence where we connect, uh, and, and it ends up uh, with Herber's getting on the end of one uh, and scoring a great goal. So some good things are starting to happen. You're starting to feel it in practice that the guys are confident. Uh, we do recognize now though with two uh, tough home games uh, coming up, uh, against a good Houston team that's as dangerous as anybody on the counterattack, uh, and also Colorado coming in the weekend, it's a, uh, a good opportunity to pick up points, uh, similar to how Toronto did. Uh, and now, you know, at the same time, we have a, an opportunity to, you know, uh, move ourselves up the table. Uh, it's something that you know we'll have our home fans behind us for, and we're excited to get to work. Questions here in the room for Jim. When you have a short week like this, what have you learned over the years with time management and player management? Well, we have we have uh, a lot of depth this year. I, I think that that's fair. And, and the, the biggest thing is uh, it's not so hard at all as, as a professional soccer player to go uh, Saturday to Wednesday. That's enough time to recover. The tricky one is then to back it up with another Saturday game. You, you would hope, and I know Michael Bradley commented on it already, but you, you You'd like for the league uh, to get to a stage where if you do play Saturday, Wednesday, that following one could be a Sunday, you know, to give uh, the extra day uh, in there. Uh, to be fair to the, the scheduling, uh, they actually, this time around, at least got it where Houston plays us Wednesday and then follows it up with Saturday. Uh, you know, Colorado plays Wednesday and then follows it up with us Saturday. So again, uh, at least it's even for everybody. So every coach is dealing with different or with the same circumstances. and, and the, the, the choice is the difficult choice you have to make to rotate your team. Uh, but yeah, at the same time, the, the, the hard part is, is, isn't is this Wednesday. Our guys will be fine for that. You know, we have every uh, data point. Our sports performance department uh, does a great job of showing us exactly where guys are at, what thresholds they need to reach, who needs to be pulled back, who needs to be monitored. Uh, we were a little fortunate to play up a man for the last, you know, 35, 40 minutes of the game. So. Uh, the data that spits back is that it wasn't as taxing, obviously being up a man having a lot of the ball. Uh, the game really slowed down in D.C. Uh, so, you know, we, we, that, that all factors in. There's a million, of vari million variables that go into it, confidence, guys form. Uh, a couple guys have little knocks here or there, uh, so I'll have some decisions to make. Um, but, yeah, this, this is the part of the year that helps uh, when you have, have that depth. And I think we've added a lot of depth. Uh, to our group, uh, and that helps you in times of injury, uh, where, where there's not this drop off a cliff, and, and also in times now when the schedule gets a little little busier. So, uh, yeah, you, you learn uh, from it at different times, but I'd say this year I have the, the most resources I've had in terms of uh, getting through these next two games. Hey, Jim, um, last week you told us about how bad Chris Pontius was, his foot was swollen, yet yeah. he, he came back to training Thursday and, and, and played well. Could you just talk about this kind of resolve. And yeah, he, he, well, I guess he could start even at the beginning of the week. He, called, he asked to have a, a meeting with me, and you know, he said it's not soccer related, so I said my head and my could go in a lot of different ways. So uh, he had uh, in the back of his mind all week also uh, getting engaged. So he was uh, <laughs> congratulations to him, obviously getting engaged uh, the day after the game. That can affect players in different ways. <laughs> so I was nervous for him going into the Saturday game where his head would be at. Uh, so again. Uh, Little variables that come up and, and maybe don't get talked about uh, that the players go through, the, the, the emotions going into a game. But I thought he had a really good performance. Uh, the foot was always going to be painful, uh, but he's not a guy that uh, complains too much about that. He's, he's tough uh, and wants to be out there for, uh, for the team trying to get, get all three points, especially in D.C. where he's, he's obviously you know, made a, had a great career. So uh, maybe a little something extra there, but also to have in the back of his mind the uh, 
exciting time that it was the, the following day of him getting engaged. So I think that that played a, a factor, gave me a little extra energy. And, and uh, Chris had a really good performance, I thought, against DC. Jim, I guess after you have a result like DC, the, I guess the tendency is to try and keep as much of that squad together. How do you yeah. kind of measure that this week now that you guys are playing well and still having to deal with these games in such a quick fashion? Yeah, I mean, listen, there's, there's, uh, there's, I guess there's three options, right? Uh, Number one would be you, you rotate the whole squad. Uh, we lose, and then you guys will come at me. And I'm saying this with a smile on my face. I'm not going at any. Or we could go the same route, keep the same group together. Uh, we lose, and then it's why didn't you rotate? So again, it's a, it's a fine line. Or we just win, and that takes care of, of everything, and everybody stays quiet. So that's the goal, uh, is to win the game, put the best team out there. So a, a lot will be. Uh, dissected and analyzed based on, at the end of the day, the wins and losses. Uh, if we win, it won't be an issue. Uh, if, if we lose, it'll be something that maybe we could have done uh, a little bit different. That's, that's normal, that's soccer. Uh, but again, we really do have uh, a ton of people on the case in terms of knowing exactly where these guys are. Uh, it factors in their age, it factors in what they can tolerate, uh, how far they've been pushed in the game minutes in every practice session how many sprints they run, where they run on the field, uh, uh, and, and the intensity at which they run at. So it, it's monitored, uh, and we're going to put a group out there. We can't look to Colorado. We have to get a win. You see where we are on the table. And uh, yes, we have a little momentum now, but to take the foot off the gas, we have to be smart about it. Uh, there could be a change or two, but at, at the same time, it's going to be the group that is uh, going to give us the best chance uh, to, to get a, a result against a, a dangerous Houston team, which is uh, it's no secret, they, they kind of sit back, they're all really organized, uh, Wilmer's done a great job with them, but when they break, uh, they break as fast as anyone with the speed that they have and have really uh, been an incredible counterattacking team this year. When you look at those guys in terms of measuring them, is it yeah. that you're looking for matchups or are you looking more just yeah, you look at everything. guys are at? Yeah, unfortunately you look at the weather too, you know, it's, uh, it's unfortunate that we play Houston and it's going to be the first 90 degree day all year, you know, so again, all these variables go into it. It's uh, uh, a lot going on. Uh, you do look at individual matchups. You look at the speed that they have in the wide areas. Uh, you, you look at uh, a guy like Alex, who's who's got a uh, has had a great year for them and has a big engine in the middle of the field. The experience of Rico Clark, uh, that matchup. You, you you wonder how they're going to treat it, knowing that they have a game against Atlanta. But you can't really focus on that. I'm preparing for their best group. Uh, their their what you call starting groups, so the group that played against Vancouver. I'm expecting that. Minus maybe the little hamstring injury that Ellis picked up, uh, and, and we're approaching it in a, in a similar fashion. You know, if there's a guy that has a knock, uh, and our players come to me and, and, and let me know, and the sports department says this is a time to, to pull back, uh, we will. Uh, but we still, uh, again, have to uh, chase wins right now. You know, uh, at home, uh, the onus is on us to try to dictate the tempo of the game. Uh, again, with the weather. Uh, <laughs> Again, favoring them a little bit in terms of you know where they're coming from and then the, the, the way their roster is constructed. They have some guys that are pretty comfortable in the in the hot weather, that's for sure. Um, so we'll have to be smart about controlling the tempo of the game and not letting it turn into this end-to-end -end track meet. That factors into a lot of different things too. But uh, the focus is solely on on Houston, and I can't look ahead to, to next Saturday at this stage. Kevin, okay. Jim, what did you see from El Cino as a ten? Yeah, so. You know, I thought he, he, a lot of the things we worked on him with as a winger came out in the game where we've been trying to get him to run in behind uh, the defense a little more. And he tend, has a tendency to kind of come inside and, and uh, not stretch them as much and want the ball at his feet. Um, strangely, as, as a number 10, he saw the ball that, you know, Fabinho plays him over the top where he's running, running in behind aggressively. The one that Birnbaum actually makes a hell of a play in the box to, to defend. Otherwise, that's a, a great goal, a tap in for El Sino and a really good action from Chris. Um, to get him to do that, to run hard in the box, was really eye opening. It was good. Uh, did we get him on the ball as much as I would like? I still want him on the ball a little more. But you do see, because uh, he comes inside as a winger anyway, uh, when he does get open space, his first couple steps are as quick as anybody in the league. So he has that getaway. He was able to get away from Jeffrey a, a couple times where it was. Uh, in now open space uh, and then had an opportunity or two to make a, a final pass and, and did well. I thought he did well defensively too, his pressure, that's always the thing you're, you're concerned with in a guy in a sort of a new spot. He played there maybe two games for us at the beginning of last year out of uh, when Barnetta was hurt, but 
Um, you know, the defensive responsibilities. Uh, he actually closed the ball with real intensity. That was good to see. Um, does he pick and choose his moments when to, to run and, and sprint for sure? Uh, but all good attacking players have to do that to kind of pace themselves and not run themselves out of the game. Uh, he cramped up uh, in the 60th minute or so uh, in both calves. So um, it is a different kind of workload. It's not, I'm not saying it's more or less, but it's a different kind of running a lot more uh, short, sharp change of direction. Um, so I thought overall, though, he did a good job in kind of a, I don't want to call it an emergency, but you know, the thinking was uh, with, with him or, or Adam, you know, two guys that I think are capable of. I love Adam uh, as well, but um, the type of game it was going to be uh, kind of a fight, uh, you know, at DC, it's never uh, this beautiful, pretty soccer. And I think that the first half would uh, probably spit that back out to you guys from what you saw. So um, I didn't think it was fair to Adam to throw him in in his first start on the road in DC, all the, the variables uh, where it wasn't going to be a, about fighting or excuse me, about uh, soccer uh, and, and more about you know a, a fight and I went with the more experienced guy and I thought Elsina did a, a good job. Yeah, uh, any update on Roland? Yeah, so Roland came out uh, to train yesterday and uh, you know started with uh, the, uh, reserve, the reserve group. Um, the, the first group did a good workout and then had a little bit of a regen on the side um, and, and Roland started to push off and, and really play and, and literally right before I talked to him I said How's it feel? You know, and he said it feels really good. It feels great. Uh, did treatment all weekend, and then, you know, once you start to play, uh, within only a couple minutes, he he uh, realized he was not 100 percent. So it's not quite there yet. Um, I, I don't think it'll be uh, a possibility for the weekend, or excuse me, for the Wednesday, uh, unfortunately. Uh, but hopefully, maybe you know, Saturday he can play some sort of a role. So. Uh, disappointing. Uh, it's not that he did anything worse to make it worse, but he just said it didn't feel uh, quite there yet. <laughs> it stinks because literally two minutes before we started, he, I asked him, "Is it 100%?" He said, "Yeah, it's 100%." And then uh, once the game started, uh, the game kind of tells you something, so it, it wasn't quite there. We'll go with Jacob in the back and over uh, Ali and Harris have been really well yeah. um, lately, but and then also in the preseason. So, what does their play do for the confidence? Of the and you have a guy that can be really offensive and a guy who can play box to box. Yeah, obviously with, with uh, a couple different variables prevented it from, uh, you know, the, the partnership uh, kind of blossoming even quicker, uh, you know, within the preseason, some different things we had to deal with. But uh, uh, now that they're next to each other, um, we've worked really hard in the past four or five weeks of the, the sliding defensively together and that understanding when now uh, Ali does step out, Harris needs to slide quickly and, and be in front of the center backs and vice versa when when Harris slides out, Ali needs to cover for him. Uh, and defensively, they've been excellent. You know, you look at the performance uh, that Harris had in the game, uh, that Ali had in the game. You know, Harris gets a goal and a couple assists, and that's that's great. That's a bonus for me. Uh, but what I really liked was his defensive work, uh, doing a good job on Acosta the week before. He did a good job on Sasha. So, um, as good as they both are with the ball, everyone everyone uh, sometimes forgets that they're. Uh, in the positions they are, they have to think defense uh, too, and they've been kind of the leaders in the middle of the field getting us these clean sheets because the best defenders in the world, the best center backs in the world can do nothing if there's not pressure to the ball, and that's where we've been better as a team now, getting pressure to the ball. Uh, and it makes everyone's job across the, the back line especially a heck of a lot easier, a lot more predictable, uh, a lot easier to read, and it sounds so simple, but all we've really worked on is just pressure to the ball, cover for each other, and more balance in the group and not having uh, guys kind of on islands. And really, they've done a good job of staying connected, you know, 30 yards from CJ to the center backs and just kind of moving as a unit. Uh, and it, it's going well. Uh, are we, are we, have we solved anything or are we perfect? Absolutely not. Have a, still a ton to work on, but um, it does give us a chance now in all these games, uh, especially in our home building now. Uh, but it starts with those two and the, the relationship they have. Uh, and they're, they're really good soccer players, you know, really, really proud of the way that they've played and taken a, a leadership role in the middle of the field. Charlie, and then Murray. Well, CJ, you know, finding the net a lot this yeah. year, you know, but you have the DC United game where it's kind of everybody got involved. What does that do for the coaching and players' confidence? It's great to have other guys step up and, and contribute to, for what it's worth. And again, people will disagree with me, but I thought that was CJ's actually best game of the year. Uh, just the, 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 the tight spots he turned out of how he uh, made Boswell and Apare's night uh, very difficult, made them run a lot, pressured in the right way, literally sets up the, the third goal with his defensive work and, and stealing the ball. Uh, so I thought his 
his uh, performance was his best of the year. Again, it doesn't end in a hat trick or it's not as sexy or flashy as the other ones with goals, but I thought that, uh, you know, he's really confident right now. Uh, again, his ability to hold the ball up, turn, and, and give us possession after possession where, you know, in, in some cases, uh, uh, a lot of times you, you lose balls in, in, in tight spots. He's been doing a great job holding them for us. Uh, he's worked hard on uh, restarts. I think his only flaw in the game, his only bad moment was defending on a corner kick against Birnbaum where Birnbaum gets the free header and he just gets screened actually by, by Jack Elliott. So he's also, you know, he deals with the other team's best header of the ball <laughs> on attacking restart. So he's a true, uh, you know, two-way player uh, for a number nine that's rare. Uh, he is a, he's a unique player. There's no, uh, no, no two ways about it. Uh, it doesn't look like anything else in the league uh, if you try to compare him to somebody. Uh, but he's doing really well right now. But to have uh, a lot of other guys contribute and get goals in this one is a, a good way to take the load off of, of CJ's back. And, and, you know, of course, we want him scoring goals, but I, I think that his performance uh, was a, a really solid one from start to finish against DC. Chris? Uh, you talked about Houston's style of play, yeah. how they kind of sit back and then they can explode very quickly. So how do you guys defend against that when you're used to seeing teams yeah. yeah, yeah, we've been getting pressed by, you know, you look at the past few weeks, Red Bull on the road in D.C., you're always going to get some pressure against you. Uh, this will be unique, even, listen, Houston is 6-0-1 is at, at home. Uh, they've played seven home games already, three on the road. Uh, they've yet to win on the road. So a little imbalance in the schedule. It's because they got nice weather down in Houston, so they send everybody down there early on. Uh, and, and Wilmer and, and their group has done a great job getting points early uh, and being really tough to play against. The, the thing uh, that we really need to be careful of uh, is, well, one would be not sending both of our outside backs flying forward. You always want to have at least three back against this group because they break so quickly. Uh, you know, the other big one is when we're in possession and we do have them pinned in and their, their defenders are sitting at the top of the 18, uh, you know, you can tend to get lulled to sleep and just watching as a, as a defender and saying, wow, we're really knocking the ball nice here. This is going well. The second you turn over a ball, there has to be an immediate reaction to, to press them uh, and not give free service. If you look at the tape, Alex literally wins balls at the top of their 18 and almost hits these blind 50-yard diagonals and they're off to the races. So uh, if we also have to, if we do lose the ball, if we have to take a foul in a smart way, uh, 80 yards from our goal, we'll do so just to slow things down. Uh, because you don't want to get let them get out and open up their legs because uh, they're, like I said, as good as anybody right now uh, in the transition game uh, with the speed that they possess. Do you have any update on Josh Yarrow and what's BC's situation? Yeah, speaking of speed. Uh, yeah, Josh is uh, training really well. Uh, you know, it's just a matter of the doctors now, you know, giving the okay for, for game action. Uh, he's passing every test in training, that's for sure. With the soccer ball, he's been very sharp. Uh, the fitness is getting better and better. Uh, he looks like he's, to my eyeballs, ready to go. Uh, he's itching to go, um, but at the same time, I have to be smart and, and wait for the full clearance from the, from the doctors. But it is uh, trending in the right way for sure. I'm really happy with him. Who was the other one? BC. BC is, uh, you know, he, he should be uh, back in training in, in, hopefully in the, the next week or so. So hopefully that's uh, sooner rather than later uh, as we go through this busy stretch. As you, you know, you, uh, you know, the potential of now. You, with Jonesy obviously gone and, and different things happening with the Gold Cup coming up and maybe some of our guys getting a look at that. Uh, yeah, you, you need everybody you know, fully healthy and, and ready to go uh, in those, those busy moments. Do you see Josh as maybe a possibility for Bethlehem this weekend? No, he won't play for Bethlehem this weekend. I wish. We're still not allowed. Jim, would you chalk up uh, Kubo's form to, is that just him playing with Wilmer again, or is it the Honduran guys next to him? Yeah, I, th I think there's something there for sure with Wilmer. Wilmer seems to get the best out of him in the, the, the Chivas USA days. That was when uh, Kubo was uh, at his best, uh, for sure. Uh, it does help to get service. Uh, I think every striker needs good service, and right now, uh, between Ellis, Kyoto, uh, Manotos out there, uh, Andrew Wenger's done a good job getting them crosses as well. Uh, and, and he's he's clinical around the goal. Uh, what you also see is is their their wingers are so dangerous. Alex is so dangerous on the dribble uh, that it, it results in a lot of fouls in, in the box. I think they have had six PKs, I think five scored. So that helps Cubo's numbers as well. So we have to be really smart uh, around the box because they are so uh, dynamic. You have to move your feet. You have to force things to a double team, uh, and it's it's not a one on one job because they are uh, pretty dangerous. Anything else on the floor for Jim? 
Anything on the phones for Jim? Hey, this is Eugene with Brother Louis Dan. Uh, we're just trying to shut out from the, from the guys. Uh, what has changed, if anything, uh, as far as defensive setup? Yeah, again, uh, the biggest thing is just, you know, from CJ to the back line, keeping that 30 yards, keeping nice and compact, and, and the sliding as a group. So, you know, when the ball's on uh, the right side, uh, having Fabinho, having uh, Fafa in the recent games all the way tucked over so that they're in a good spot to help. And, and leaving that furthest pass, you know, there's there's only a couple guys in MLS that can hit that accurate, you know, 60-yard diagonal uh, consistently. So if they do do it, we have at least enough time to recover. So it's been... Uh, again, better pressure to the ball, sliding together as a group, uh, and just being overall uh, tougher to play against. And it needs to be said, uh, like any good team, in the big, in the big moments when they we do give up chances because you're going to over 90 minutes. Andre's made some big saves. Uh, you know, Jack Elliott's made some big tackles in the box. Gooch just gets his head on a clearance. So a little bit is 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 dodging bullets again. I'm not. Uh, I look at the game maybe differently than everybody else in terms of early on in the season, uh, we were actually playing some better soccer than, than we have in the recent weeks. What's happened now is uh, there's more confidence, there's more belief, and, and we're getting those big plays in the box. So uh, I think we need to continue on this trend, uh, but also still be respectful that it can change quickly in this league in the, in the negative way. So I uh, need to keep the momentum going forward. But yeah, the team commitment overall uh, defensively has been really good. Uh, uh, we've been a little sharper with our passing out of the back as well, and I think Jack Elliott gets a lot of credit for that because he's uh, he, he's good with the ball, and it, it makes us have to defend less if we're able to, to keep possession a little bit more. So a lot of variables that go into it. Uh, it's a team effort in that regard, but uh, needless to say, it's been a good streak of shutouts, and I challenge the game, guys before the game uh, in D.C., let's see how long we can keep this thing going and really take pride in not giving up goals, uh, especially... Even when you're up 2-3-0, those are the moments where everyone takes a deep breath and you give up a late one. I, I, I want to see how long we can push ourselves and challenge ourselves to, to keep the zeros going. Any other questions on the phone for Jim? Hey, Jim, this is Adam from the soccer page. Uh, I, know. I want to kind of follow up on that last question. Just to say, you know, you got these three shutouts in a row now. Um, have you talked at all with the guys? The guys talked about you know, when, that, when that next goal is scored how to rebound from it because, uh, you know, in the past, that's something that's right. been an issue. Once the first goal goes in, confidence can drop. Uh, have you sort of talked about how to respond? Do you give up that first goal? For sure. And, and it, it's so hard. That's one of the hardest things to, to teach uh, as a coach to go through those moments where, yeah, you, you've done a good job now defensively and, and, yeah, you can give up goals. There's there's other teams are paid money to try to score as well. So uh, it's going to happen. Uh, but at the same time, your response afterwards needs to be, yeah, they scored a goal, but at the same time, if we continue to do what we do, it, it, it's going to work out all right. What it can't be is, and it has happened in this building, and I don't hide from it, when we do concede goals sometimes here, it is deflating. And the, the crowd can get quiet because uh, they've seen it before, and then they, there's almost that here you go, here we go again moment. Uh, and our guys need to, to uh, push through that, kick through that. I think we had a little bit of a breakthrough, obviously, again, in the, the second and then the third goal against New York, obviously a little bit of relief. Uh, in that regard, but yeah, we're going to give up another goal at some point this year, and, and that response has to be, who cares? You know, we're we're getting on with the game because we're a good team and we believe in what we're doing. Uh, uh, you know, yeah, I, of course, I wanted to continue to go for the next certainly two home games here and keep zeros. That means we're going to get points, uh, but at the same time, I'm not uh, crazy enough to think we're going to shut everyone out. So yeah, the, the mindset needs to be. Uh, it's over. It's like a defensive back in football. You're going to get beat at some point. Uh, well, how you respond to it is, is the most critical. The next play is the most important play. And, and defenders have to have uh, short-term memories because uh, their job is uh, not a glamorous one. We'll just put it that way. One more on the phone, if anyone would like it. I mean, I'll, I'll ask another one to talk a little bit about Jack Lee's passing. Yeah. Teams are going to jump. They can see what he can do. Um, have you talked with him at all about how to handle uh, the adjustments you're going to make to try and get more pressure on him and make him more comfortable? Right. Yeah. So. Again, one thing in the big picture of things, we've done a decent job. Uh, it started against Red Bull of, of dropping our center backs when we're in possession about 10 yards deeper uh, than everybody. So now uh, it's 10 more yards that, that Wright Phillips has to run, which is tiring for him. And then it also gives Jack 
Jack and Gooch some more time on the ball. Uh, and yeah, you're right. Now that they've seen him a couple times, because uh, again, he, he probably isn't a kid who passes the eyeball test when, when teams come up against them because he looks uh, tall and, and, and skinny and, and kind of, you know, uh, he doesn't look like a, a, a center back in some ways, but his, everyone's been impressed with him. All the coaches uh, speak very highly of him. Uh, his ability to pass now is not going to be a secret in the league. So uh, teams will start to take him away rather than show him the ball because they were thinking he's this rookie kid from uh, West Virginia that, that uh, was passed up by a lot of teams. Uh, but now he's going to be kind of a, a marked guy to have defenders run at him to not let us start our attacks easy. Uh, he'll have to adjust. Uh, there's little movements you can make with your body. You know, it's not about tricks or step overs from your center back. It's just little angles and, and, and uh, showing that you're going one way, quick changes of direction that can open up the holes that he's able to pass through. Uh, but his feet are special. He's done a great job for us. I'm really happy for him. Uh, and, and we just want him to be who he is. I'm, I'm, we're not going to put 50 pounds of muscle on him. That's not going to change. Uh, he is exactly what he is. Uh, and it's pretty darn good right now. And he's, he's winning a lot of his, his individual battles. He's had really tough matchups against top forwards in our league already. And he stood up. And each one, each week is going to be a little bit different. Cubo Torres is another challenge. It's he's a clever guy in the box who uh, has that ability to wrong foot you, get on his right foot and curl a shot. So yeah, you give him little tidbits of information, but at the end of the day, he's out there uh, on his own, learning each and every day and getting better and better each game. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you very much. Thanks. Tim.